double hop, dude? Yep, double, double hop. Double hopper, dude. Not as big. That little guy. I'm gonna lift this one. Yeah. I wanna show you guys something real quick. Come up here. I see a lot of guys boat flip fish incorrectly. I'm gonna show you something. If you look, I'm almost the length of my rod, a little bit less to this fish right here. Okay, see that? When you're boat flipping a fish, a lot of guys reel up way too close to the tip and then they reach way out here. All you need to do is come up about a foot. Take a look at me here. All you need to do is come about a foot right up from your reel handle and then swing them at yourself like that. What that's gonna help is you're not gonna dangle the fish out. You're gonna be, be able to bring the fish right to your toes and not have to walk them down, not have to let out line on your reel. It's gonna bring the fish right up close to you. So even when you see us boat flip those bigger ones, that's about the same principle of line we have out. We're not over choking our rod. The rod's designed to bend all the way through back to the handle. So grabbing up higher on the rod and lifting that's not how the rod's designed to bend, to, so in theory you can break off your rod tip at that point. But that's how you boat flip one. I found that spot again, dude. It's, it, okay, yeah. I, I see where you're at now. <laughs> Let me not take my eyes off of it. It's got weight to it. I'm, right. a, I'm gonna, oh, here, here she comes. comes. Oh, yeah, good one. All right, you're on this one, Travis. I'm gonna try to poach your stuff over here. You're not, you're not wasting your time, yeah. You realize <laughs> You got this school fired up. So. Oh, here we go. Yeah, that's another good one. Baby. Come Dude. here, baby. Come here, baby. Oh, come here, baby. Now you're seeing why I can't leave? <laughs> My Bye. girlfriend, I've been gone for a week now. My girlfriend keeps saying, when are you coming back? Fiance. I'm gonna <laughs> correct this man. His fiance. <laughs> My fiance. <laughs> she said yes, so. She did say yes. By the way, Travis is engaged. <laughs> By the time you guys watch this, he's probably still engaged. <laughs> oh man. There we go. There we go. Another Clear Lake slab. I mean, this is, that is a beer belly right there, man. Oh, yeah. I, that is something I'm working hard for. That I drink a lot of drinking more than us. <laughs> That's hard to do. What's going on here is these fish are the mouths of these creeks, okay? They're giant schools and they're feeding on the hitch. They're, they're, they're basically just feeding up for, uh, for the springtime. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing though, they're not locked on one any given spot. So you've got a fan cast around the area. You know they're in this area, but it's a lot of casts, and it's not you're not casting at the corner of the toolies and things like that. <laughs> you are fan casting all over the place, but the second you get that first bite, the most important thing, if you want to catch a lot of fish, is to know exactly where your boat was for that cast. You don't have to know where those fish were, nope. because if you have the boat in the same place, you can then fan cast out again until you find it again, because what we're in right now is a 10 foot radius that we need to cast in and we're not hitting every cast on that we're hitting probably no. one out of every five casts on that exact spot but when it's on the right spot you will catch these big fish and you know we're already showing in the live well when you're on the right spot you can absolutely you can catch bigger fish than you've ever caught in your life i mean this is the opportunity oh, to catch for sure you know those record record day catches you know i see uh, probably there's probably a lot of people watching and wondering right now uh what's going on right here travis is throwing a shad color pretty much a little bit more translucent than a shad, not like a pure nickel or chrome finish. And I'm throwing the Bill Lewis original, uh, the crawdad right there, you know, the dark crawfish. And he's getting a lot more bites. I'm about to switch over shortly here. He's also throwing on 12 pound fluorocarbon and I'm throwing on 15 pound P line, 100% fluorocarbon. The difference is we're casting out there, we're letting it fall, we're hopping it up and letting it shimmy back down to the bottom. It's basically right when it gets to the bottom, that's where they're associating and that's where they're eating it. So it's imperative that we're not yo-yoing through the middle of the water column. We're actually letting it get all the way down in about six to eight foot of water out here. We probably wouldn't get the strikes if the bait didn't get down to the bottom. Right. So with the 15 pound fluorocarbon, the shimmy's a little bit different. So the lighter you go, your bait gets a lot more natural shimmy because you have a thicker line diameter resisting against that bait shimmy. The thinner, liner di thinner line diameter gives you a lot more shimmy to that bait. So that's one thing that you might want to keep in mind. If you're out in the middle of an open area like this where it's pretty much snag free, you may get a little grass from time to time, fishing that lighter line is going to get you added bites. And by fishing 100% fluorocarbon, we're feeling when it lands, we're feeling that little subtle pickup, that little stop in the lift instead of having a lot of stretch in your line. And uh, it's working so far. Nick, you mentioned that fluorocarbon too. That's uh, 
that's been a big key too to catch these fish because I'm, I'm getting them on these long, long, long casts. So, but I really want to feel, first of all, I want to feel the, uh, the vibration of the lipless crank. Every time I lift, I want to feel that vibration. Feel the vibration. Yeah. Marky Mark said it best. And then, uh, but then I want to feel when I have some structure down there. Like I just hit some little grass, whatever's left. There's a lot of little dead grass and stuff down there. And that seems to be where they're uh, congregated around. I just felt some down there. So I know I'm in the right spot, and that should be where... Uh, That's imperative with that fluorocarbon to get that sensitivity. You know when you hit a grass patch versus just, you know, open bottom. Yep, you'd be amazed. It'll let you know where to key in on that next cast. Exactly, exactly. So I'm, when I'm out here fishing this, I'm not just trying to get bit. I'm also feeling what's going on down there. I want to know that lure's working right, and then I want to know that I'm in the right area by feeling out that bottom. Because it seems like every time I feel a little bit of, um, a little bit of something down there, that's when I'm getting bit, and I'm not, I'm not talking about logs, and I'm not coming over all kinds of different uh, heavy structure. It's just, it might be, uh, you know, some little dead grass or something, or what's left of that stubble that, you know, there used to be a weed bed out here earlier, uh, you know, last summer. Did you just see that? Yep. That's a tank. I'm gonna loosen up the drag. I don't know how well I got her hooked, man, because I was not ready for that. That was at the end of my cast. It's much line out as I could possibly have, and I was on the fall, so I had no, it was just complete slack in the line. <laughs> Look at that mouth. Dude, I got that. Chimney crickets. Oh man, I don't know how I'm grabbing her. Come on, Steve, I did. Right in next to her, that is not That is not a fish you lip right there. <laughs> but look at that, she choked it. I mean, look at where that is. I mean, that is just buried in her. Wow. Jeez. Wow, wow, wow. What wow. torture she is, man. Jeez. Nice fish. Oh my God. That's a belly. That's a big <laughs> belly right there. I was putting that on my reel handle in case you're wondering what I was doing to hide the human scent. Get in my belly. You're really creeping it on your lift. Mm -hmm. I'm hopping it a little too. Oh, man. I creep. Yeah. Creep. Yeah. I don't oh, know creep. the rest of these words, but doesn't matter. And what? TLC. All that matters. TLC. Waterfalls. Hey, we're on a we're on a roll for a while, little dude. Chasing little bass. Stick to those fatty old greens that you're used to. You hear the bust in the light right now? Man. Getting crazy, Nate. They're dancing to your music, dude. That's what's up. So I just gave Nick my rod. Nick just missed his third fish on the uh, no, on the lost, not missed, lost, lost. on and off. And uh, <laughs> and I'm I'm hooking up pretty consistently to the fish I'm getting. So <laughs> so uh, what happened is I gave him a hook that I was using yesterday, and I started missing fish yesterday on it. And I I think what's happened is these hooks are just too dull. So I told him if he missed another one, then I'd change them out personally because it's not very good etiquette to hand somebody a uh, some dull. <laughs> Plus, if somebody else offers, always take the offer. Yes, so I'm going to change out his hooks right now. He's using my rod, and we'll see if he can get a fish uh, in the meantime. If I lose one on this, it's just bad luck. But always make sure that you guys carry fresh hooks in your boat and um, little O-ring pliers. So it makes life a lot easier. But um, if you get in fish like this and your hooks get dull, you'll start missing big ones. And, you know, I mean, I could bet money that Chris, I mean, that Nick, one of those fish was big. Yeah, I mean, there, there's yeah. no way we haven't got any. We haven't got any small ones. Now I mean, that's one dink. So when you're talking about missing giant fish, that hurts. Yep. That thing was getting heavy too, and then it just off. Sire, uh, here you are. <laughs> very good. I like it very much. Yeah. You got some new hooks on there, man. So you have no excuse. Here we go. No double stamp needed. The conductor. <laughs> so after we beat up on that spot, we decided to roll by a couple of Clear Lake locals and visit some of our buddies along the way from Robert Matsura, Paul Bailey, Tim Little, uh, Matt Allen was out there as well. You know, what we're really doing here today, and I know Travis already mentioned it, but what we're doing is we're going outside of the creek mouths 
and looking for shoals, those, those harder, flat bottom. We're looking for a clean bottom, and then we're looking for old grass patches along those bottoms. Basically, it's a big isolated flat just out from these creek mouths, and we're looking for like little roots down there, short stem grass, something for these bass to associate to outside of these creek mouths. Oh, nothing to see here, guys. Nothing to see here. Nick tried to lose my LV. He made a cast, and the line came out, but uh. I wasn't about to accept that. <laughs> so this is attached to nothing. I casted that LV out and somehow if the line had a nick or something in it and it broke off, went flying out there and Travis noticed it had some good yardage behind it. Doom shoots out there, lets his bait drop, slow rolls it, brings up the line and now we're bringing it in by hand, so. Yeah, I'm not letting Nick lose a lure no. that's working hot, man. Mm -mm. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, last one in the boat. And he got her back, it's even the right bait. <laughs> Oh, there it is, there it is, Nick, there it is, baby. Yeah. Right barely in the nostril, He's barely right in the hand. nostril. Come here, baby. Not bad. Oh, come on, open your mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, oh, dude, dude. yeah. She ain't huge, but we had a little bit of a dry spell. What we're doing here now is uh, we've seen a bunch of birds diving over here. So we're like, let's go look, see if we can find the bait. You can go ahead and toss that fella back in. You know, not not bad, nice fun bass. But what we were looking at is uh, we we're looking at all the birds diving over here. And we come over here and looking on the graph, as soon as we found a stack of bait, started throwing out, lost one, caught that one right away. And it's just by paying attention to our surroundings see the birds diving we stared off look for some few rings on the surface you know a lot of the time when the sun's blaring down a lot of the time you're not going to see the bait touching the surface but you know watch those white birds circling around if you got nothing else going it doesn't hurt to pull up and try something new especially if there's birds flying around it they got to eat too so we did we came over we had massive yellow cloud of bait on the screen and just like that 